Well, welcome to Bethel Online and our Daily Hope uh, devotional uh, series we've been doing uh, as long as we've been in shelter in place. And I've been given a lot of thought to a couple of ideas, rest and peace, rest and peace. Uh, now, not rest in peace, just to be clear, <laughs> I'm talking about rest and peace. And uh, they're often connected in our world. And often when one is missing, the other one is missing as well. I was thinking about this. Our grandkids, usually if rest is missing in our grandkids, then peace is missing for everybody else, usually. But that's not all, only true for my grandkids. Sometimes it could be true for our spouse. Sometimes it could be true for our college, uh, for our college roommate uh, as well. Well, uh, the Bible often connects rest and peace as well. And a, a guy who lived about 3,000 years ago, King David, uh, I mean, he lived a long time ago, but the songs that he wrote became psalms in the Old Testament of the Bible. And they are as fresh, and they are fresh and relevant for today. Super relevant for today. And in Psalm 4 and verse 8, he ends this song this way. He says, In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Now, what's interesting is David doesn't begin his song this way at all. I mean, if you read the beginning, it's a short little song. Answer me, O Lord. Answer me. Bring me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me. He goes a couple of times. How long? How long? Right? Two times in one verse. How long is this stuff going to go on that isn't right? People doing things that they shouldn't do. And I thought, well, David, we're 3,000 years later, and it's still happening. We still don't get it right. We still struggle. This is our struggle in our world, doing things that we shouldn't do. And King, and King David, you know, he penned about half of all the Psalms. There's 150 of them. And he penned about, about half of them. And, and you'll see this pattern. You'll see this rhythm, the way he starts a Psalm and the way he ends it. You see this rhythm very often. And at first glance, you look at it and you go, well, I guess rest and peace get their start, it seems like anyways, with complaining and grumbling, grumbling, because it kind of sounds like that's what he's doing. These are two things that the Bible actually speaks against. So what gives? Well, there's a difference between complaining and grumbling, not to say that David didn't do his share. He did. But there's a difference between that and confession confession. Uh, see, what David is doing here in this psalm is he is pouring out his heart and his struggles and his, his frustrations and his disappointments and his discouragements to the God of creation. And he doesn't seek revenge on people. He doesn't seek retribution. Not, not to say that at times he does. Sometimes he doesn't get it right. And the Bible records the whole truth. But, but this here, that's not what he's doing. He's actually just seeking after what is right or righteous, righteous, that right thing to do. And that's why he says in Psalm 4, and if you look at the latter part of verse 4 and then verse 5, he says, look at, search your hearts, he says, and be silent. He says, offer the sacrifices of the righteous, sacrifice for what is right. And then he says, trust in the Lord. And in the process, he finds rest and peace for his life. And the rest that is available that David is talking about is not just rest for your body, though it, it is that, but it's rest for your soul. Soul rest is a little bit of a mystery. But we know that soul rest is deeper. Soul rest comes ultimately from knowing and experiencing the love and care of the God of the universe. This is profound. It's profound. Honestly, and I've been following Jesus for a long time. It took me years before I really began to grasp the love that God has for me. And how I could rest in that love. The better I get at resting in his love, the more I find rest for my soul. Now, this doesn't mean that I always get it right, because for sure I don't. But I am growing in what 
Jesus meant when he told his disciples in John 15, he said, make sure you abide in my love. Remain or keep in step with my love. John 15, 9 and 10. When that kind of rest breaks in, so does peace, for sure. Now, not necessarily peace and quiet, but peace. It's the peace that reminds us that we will dwell in safety. No government can keep you totally safe. I know that right now, and some of them I think from very good motives, I don't think all from good motives, but some have good motives and say, you know, hey, we're going we're gonna to keep everybody safe. Well, nobody can keep everybody safe, but God can keep us safe. And this is David's point. He says, you're the one that causes me to dwell in safety. In fact, he says, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And I pray today that you will find that rest and that peace in your life. Thanks for taking a few moments and tuning in today to Bethel Church's Daily Hope.